Welcome back, retro gamers. This time we're going back to the 80s on the ZX Spectrum. Le Mans was the game Konami hoped would close the gap on Sega's other great racers. The graphics and speed were so fast in the arcade original, many critics of the time thought that the arcade version wouldn't translate very well down to the ZX Spectrum. As humble as the 8-bit ZX Spectrum is, in the right hands, anything is seemingly possible. When compared to the Amiga version, you can't help be disappointed with the ZX Spectrum effort. The graphics are a little bit jerky, and the controls will take some getting used to. But moaning aside, Driving this Toyota Celica through three different countries is still great fun. There's a brilliant feeling of inertia as you whip around the corners. Graphically, for a specy game, this is absolutely brilliant. Your Sinclair awarded this mega game status, and who am I to argue? This is another game I played as a child, but this one is literally outrun in a truck. I mean, just look at the speed this thing runs at. There's no doubt this is a fast and slick racer, and one well worth adding to any ZX Specky collection. Super Trucks has everything you'd expect from an 8-bit racer. There's bumps, hills, twists, and vicious turns, along with forks in the road. I can only imagine the fallout if they'd have used a Ferrari instead of a 3-ton truck. We swap a big dirty truck for Formula 1 cars here. US Gold did an amazing job. From the graphics to the sound, along with the speed and animation, and let's not forget the superlative intro screens, there's absolutely no doubt that this is a high quality product throughout. For me, it doesn't quite take pole position on the ZX Spectrum, but these things are all about personal taste. Here we have an excellent coin-up conversion, which can't possibly be faulted in any serious way. The graphic design was well up to standards back in the day, animation is fast, and the whole thing runs pretty smooth. The controls are fantastic, and considering it's all happening on a 48k ZX Spectrum, the sound is well integrated also. For me, this is some of the best programming on the ZX Spectrum and one of the best racers. If ever asked to sum up a stunt car racer amongst its peers, the simple answer from 9 out of 10 people would probably come down to speed. But let's not forget, for a racing game, this was massively innovative for its time. You had a car racing around on roller coaster style elevated tracks. Across the vastness of the eight circuits, you'd have to negotiate huge chasms where only the most talented would survive. Overlander showed US Gold and Titus how to make a road blaster. The better you play, the more reward there is and the more equipment you can buy. For a specky game, the graphics are colourful and the pseudo 3D gives a good impression of speed. With practice, you realise the difficulty level is set just right. If you fancy yourself as a psychopathic Mad Max style racer, Overlander might just be the game for you. It certainly is for me. Although the ZX Spectrum could never hope to meet the roadside majesty of the original arcade. This cross-country racer on the ZX Spectrum still provided decent pedal to the metal action. The sound was pretty good too, with the arcade's main theme tune making it across relatively unscathed. And on the whole, despite the limitations, this proved a very satisfactory conversion. I know, I know, another Formula One game, but bear with. 
This is a game that you have to work at to get anything from it. Petrol heads will absolutely love this game. Only the best drivers who treat the car with the utmost respect will see things to the chequered flag. You'll need to watch the rev counter, fuel consumption, car temperature, water temperature, the turbo, and more importantly, the road. What a winner. This was an absolute fantastic budget racer back in the 80s. Each level is made up of four stages, sharp bends, and a much needed turbo boost. But beware, you can only use it eight times on each level. Speeding past other cars and zipping past the buildings is absolutely great fun. So a tremendous game for the money. And if you ask me, it's better than the US Gold conversion of Turbo Outrun. I bloody loved playing this as a kid, racing across Western America. This couldn't be more different from an arcade racer, the likes of Outrun. The movement of the car and road is really realistic. The road systems, when I played as a kid, were wholly believable. The game adds a whole new dimension, as you'll need to plan the route and take the correct turnings, whilst avoiding and whizzing past the corrupt policeman at 200 miles per hour. Yet another unbelievable arcade conversion for the ZX Speccy. It may not be the most spectacular game to look at, but it's probably one of the most fastest and most enjoyable racers on the ZX Spectrum. In the end, that's all that counts. This game is a fantastic challenge, and even today, I still load this one up for a quick blast around the track. Without question, one of the best arcade conversions for the ZX Spectrum. Boogie Boy boasted some absolute fantastic arcade conversions. Everyone should play the unbelievable excellent Commodore 64 version. But personally, for me, there was nothing quite like the ZX Spectrum version. I loved its bold, chunky visuals and the gigantic sprite for the car. For the first time in a long time, this didn't feel like a ZX Speccy game. There's plenty on offer with this version of Buggy Boy, and if you haven't, I urge you to discover them for yourself. Chase HQ hasn't aged a day. It's still as exciting as ever to play in 2020, and let's face it, it was never bettered on the Speccy. The iconic Porsche 928 handles and looks just as great as ever. Your friend Nancy and Ralph the Idaho Slasher might be getting on a bit, but they're just as much fun as you remember. So bring this one out of retirement if you get the chance, as it's still one of the best arcade conversions ever. If you like my vids, please do me the honor of liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Bye.